Hello, fans of the Growing Truth. Welcome to UC Bearcats on the Prowl. As always, I'm uh, James Ernest and my co-host, Mark Bitemaster. Mark, how's it going this week? Oh, you know, just another week in UC sports. A great week for the football team <laughs> and, uh, and actually a pretty good week for the basketball team. So I, I'm not being facetious there with the basketball team. So, uh, but, you know, we, we got a little stuff to talk about. Oh, definitely. Um, so I heard there was a big press conference tonight. Well, yeah, you know, I was uh, I was listening to actually it was the Tommy Tuberville show on the radio, and uh, he uh, isn't real happy with the media coverage. Apparently, um, he said, you know, that the media is being too negative, which is uh, interesting because I think they have reason to be negative. Um, so he basically called out their negativity as a reason that the team isn't performing as well. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can believe a lot of stuff, but, uh, not that, <laughs> not that at all. You know, we were talking, this is, uh, this is year four and, uh, if you're supposed to see some, this is his kids, you know, they were supposed to see some kind of improvement and this team is just, I mean, they haven't scored a touchdown in 10 quarters, I think. Uh, you know, and uh, I don't even know what to attribute it to. I'm, uh, play calling, is it personnel, is it the fact that he can't settle on a quarterback? I got no clue. And I guess if I knew, maybe they'd hire me. But uh, exactly. it, it, it's I mean, just it's just crazy. About reasons. Yeah, I mean, as you said, play calling, well, of course, our offensive coordinator is different from last year mm-hmm. uh, with, uh, what is it, Zach, Zach Taylor? Yeah. Yeah, the uh, Nebraska quarterback. So, mm-hmm. you know, things have changed up a bunch. Of course, losing all those players. There's a lot mm-hmm. of reasons why that, yeah. uh, you know, makes sense. But still, you don't start blaming the media because the media has never tackled or missed a tackle. Right. You know, I mean, they're not the ones there making the decision on who to play. It, it basically, when I was listening to it, um, it really just sounded like one of the last moves of a desperate man, you know. Uh, December seventh hits, and I think he's, I think he's done, you know. Um, and and you know when they hired him, I supported the hire. I thought, you know what, it's a good hire. I, I thought, oh, I think he's going to come here. I think he's going to do well. He's an established coach. I, you know, I, I just don't know why it didn't work out. And, and I guess if I knew why, then I'd be getting a call from the AD. But uh, to to talk with him about it, but I, I, you can blame it on any number of things. It just has not worked, and so I, I have a feeling that when the season's over, uh, you know, and during basketball season when we do our little football bit on the show, we're going to be talking about a coaching search and uh, and where they're I going and what they mean. what they need to do. Mm-hmm. I was going to say we can uh, we're going to be able to switch to more of a positive topic in a couple minutes because uh, yeah. we're going to have our guests join us. Uh, hopefully in the next couple minutes, uh, Courtney Lamar DeBerry. Okay, uh, good. Going in right now. You just uh, text me, so we'll be Sweet. able to talk to UC basketball because UC basketball is definitely uh, on the rise. I mean, yeah. What six years in a row making the tournament or something crazy mm-hmm. like that or ten or I mean it's it's been a really nice run. So we'll get to this. Yeah, and, and with the season just starting, you know, yeah, they haven't had two of the most challenging opponents, but uh, they've looked good uh, in in what I have seen. And, you know, there's a chance for that uh, competition to step up a little bit this weekend. I think uh, the 19th, I think that's Saturday, isn't it? Yeah, Saturday they play Rhode Island, um, oh, yeah. the, who is also ranked. Big, yeah, they're, they're a tough team. I mean, it has been many a year since Rhode Island. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, I'm trying to think of the start of the back in the day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. So, uh, how's it going, uh, Courtney? I mean, Hey, how you doing? Doing great. How about yourself? Pretty good. Cool. Uh, glad to have you on the show. Uh, Mark Peace. Lightmaster, Lamar DeBerry, uh, former yeah, center, you yeah. keep Bearcats. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're we're doing the Bearcats show uh, unfortunately, we were talking about football, so we're definitely glad you uh, called in because that gives us an opportunity to talk about basketball, something that UC is doing well at. Oh, 
Gosh, we were just, uh, I don't know if you saw the Tuberville uh, show tonight, but it was it was dreadful. <laughs> nah, I ain't get a chance to see it. <laughs> Be glad. So you're, Be glad. You're, you're, you're all right, man. Yeah, you're lucky. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, you never missed a free throw because Lance McAllister said something mean about you, or Mo Eggert. But according to uh, uh, the football coach, that happens all the time in football. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I didn't I didn't really catch too much of football, but you know that's I'm going that's, back to work. yeah that, that's all right. So uh, so uh, Coriante, you want to catch us up on what you're doing now and, and where you are and, and how things stand with you? Yeah, man. Um, I'm currently living in Chicago now, uh, north side of Chicago. I'm playing with the Windy City Bulls. That's the new, it's a new franchise for the Chicago Bulls. Um, I started off uh, playing. I came, well, I came, well, I came to the tryout here. They just wanted me to really. Well, I already got invited to the training camp that started November first. They uh, before the training camp, they invited me to come play in their open tryout just to see, just so I can get a feel for you know what I'm saying. The new the new way they, they play here. So mm-hmm. they invited me to come play just so the coaches can meet me and stuff like that. I got a chance to show show my uh, skills off in the show co- in the showcase uh game they had, uh the last game of the tryout. Then I came to uh, training camp and then they had us out here just, uh we had like two days to show, you know what I'm saying, our skills and what we can do, you know. Mm-hmm. And Basically, I made it to all the way until they to the last cut. So I'm officially on the roster now. Nice. We just had our oh, first, very cool. Yeah, we just had our first game uh, last week. I did. I did really. I did real in it. So uh, I have another game um, this Saturday. We play Texas Legends. So okay. So yeah. Very cool. What position do they have you playing? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited about it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, they got him, uh, of course, at center. Shoot, uh, yeah, you know, the defensive specialist there. Yeah, that's what they're going to have them out there doing, right? They, uh, that's that's what I've uh, been told, that uh, that's what you focus on, the, the block shots. Yeah, I'm they, I'm, the, I'm the big man in the middle. That's what they call him. Nice. Man the so, clean a lot of stuff up down there. So, you know, we'll do all the banging down low and stuff like that. You know, very good, very good. Games, you've scored eight points, so you got some rebounds going, getting some good minutes out there, even got a steal. So, yeah, it's looking like it's going good up there in uh, the Windy City. Yeah, man, I like I like the town we live in, too. It's, it's really nice. Low-key, it's, it's a quiet town we live in, too. So it's about it's about uh, 30 minutes away from downtown. So. Nice. So uh, have you got to meet any of the uh, Chicago legends? I mean, not, uh-huh. the, not like uh, not like the team you're playing against, uh, the legend, but the uh, you know f- former Bulls legends, you know, Scotty yeah, yeah, yeah. or Horace or anybody like them. Yeah, oh, they they uh, doing they've been doing a lot of travel traveling uh, lately. But we um, the first week we, uh, we we was practicing in there. Practice facility, uh-huh. the United Center uh, practice uh, practice facility. Um, they were they were in practice while we while we got there. Uh-huh. I didn't really get a chance to see see them. They was already like already like leaving by the time we got there. But we saw them walking away, but we never got a chance to you know what I'm saying meet them. But pretty soon we are going to be able to meet them because we have to. Uh, I think we're going to we're going to that game sometime right. soon. We we'll get to get to meet them. So yeah, because they've uh, they've got a good start to the season at seven and four. So it's looking uh, looking well for them. Looks like they're yeah. uh, doing well. Jim uh, Jim Butler and uh, Dwayne Wade and all. That's uh, so that's yeah. Nice to see. They have they have they have a couple guys that that's been playing um and has been playing here too. And then oh, and, nice. and um our team that got called down. They just had a guy that just got called down. He's back up now. His last name's Hunter. Oh, okay. oh J.R. J. R. Hunter. Uh, he played with 
Celtics. You now he's with the Bulls. So okay. Then we also have uh, Spencer Dewey. Dewey. He's our point guard. He's he's with the he was with the Bulls also. So okay. oh, nice. So there is opportunity for advancement. That's always good. Yeah, opportunities is just always opportunity. If you're gonna play here in the, in the inner league, you just you know what I'm saying have to play hard and earn it. So speaking of uh, opportunities, I mean, you were originally at uh, the junior college, um, Hutchinson Community College, and then yep. you went up to um, what Flint, Michigan, back into your uh, hometown area. So you, you know, yeah. shoot, of course, taking uh, advantage of opportunities and then ended up with the Bearcats for back-to-back uh, tournament bursts. Um, yeah. Yeah, you can't go wrong there. So uh, which which one was a more fun season, a more kind of rewarding season, the 2015 or the 2014? Which one did you feel that the team, you know, was more of a team? Mm, I feel like my junior year, when uh okay. coach when uh coach um Larry Davis was the coach. Mm-hmm. I say that because me and Coach Larry Davis have have a have a good connection. Like we I'm saying he understands me as a player mm-hmm. on the off the court also, you know what I'm saying? And just like mm-hmm. we were just more we, we just felt like we was more together. Like when we it was a time where we had to win five games in a row just to make it to the tournament. Mm-hmm. And we we pulled together and we found a way to win five games in a row. Nice. And then, and then, and then yeah, that yeah. tournament took on Purdue, yep. um, which, was a, which was a big one. Everyone <laughs> knows about that one. When Troy hit the big, the big, uh, mm. but beat the shot. It was also mm-hmm. one of my, one of, also one of my big games. Um, and then we yeah. took on, took on the number one team, Kentucky, on the field. So it was, it was a good experience, man. Uh, I and missed course, that year. And of course, the nice thing about that uh, that tournament was uh, just down in Louisville. So, of course, a mm-hmm. lot of the UC fans were able to travel and uh, to yeah. root you on and support you. So that was nice. Yeah, that was that was a fun year. Uh, That's one year I never forget, though. But I mean, not saying that I enjoyed my senior year, but but as far as like enjoyment, I think I enjoyed my junior year to do the best. It sounds like it. It sounds like it's just you all had to really, uh, you know gather together as a team and earn the uh, earn the bid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Mark, any uh, questions for him? Yeah, yeah, Corey. I was wondering, uh, what brought you to Cincinnati? You know, what was what was the big draw of the uh, UC program? Well, um, while we on, well, I was, originally I went to, my first year, my first year, I was at my community college, which is out of point, and then, Things didn't things didn't go things didn't go well there, you know what I'm saying, as far as like the coaching wise. So mm-hmm. I wanted to find a different opportunity, you know what I'm saying, a different field. So I transferred to Hutchinson, which is in Kansas. Mm-hmm. As soon as I uh with as soon as I transferred actually Coach Larry Davis is the one that helped me find Hutch. Okay. So he he recruited me as soon as he found out that I was transferring. He got he called me and got with me and recruited me really hard. Got me in a good place um, at Hutch. So he was really just recruited me um, out of Hutch, and then I ended up at Cincinnati. There were yeah. there were a few more other schools recruit me, but <laughs> Coach Larry Davis didn't pick, didn't put the phone down, so. He kind of wanted, so I ended up at Cincinnati. That's cool, man. Uh, Houston does have a really great tradition of uh, junior college players and players transferring mm-hmm. in to uh, mm-hmm. shoot. I mean, last night for or not last night, last week for example, we had uh, Terry Nelson on uh, UC Hall mm-hmm. of Famer. Of course, him and most of the members of that team were famous for being transfers, so it is always good to see the uh, the tradition continue, that UC mm-hmm. goes out and finds the uh, the uh, stars out there that, you know, maybe other teams have missed uh, mislabeled. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so yeah, Corey, did you, last year um, with the team, you know, uh, 
I'm looking at the last two games we've had this season. Now, did uh, did Kyle Washington practice with you guys last year? Yeah, he he was he, he was able to practice sometimes with us. Yeah. Okay. Um, he. He looks pretty good, you know. I I I had hoped that he would be, you know, uh, coming in. Uh, can you? What's his game like? If you can describe that, you know, from practicing against him, playing against him in practice, what what we can expect from him? Because he, because to me and a lot of the other fans, obviously he's new to us. You know, only two games in. Kyle, what do you guys expect out of Kyle out of Kyle Washington that he's going to give you? 110 percent every practice and every game. He's a high motor guy. He's really passionate about everything. He he wants every shot to to go in. <laughs> you know. Okay. So, but he man he he. I one thing I can say about Kyle, he really works hard. Just just to get real, he he really like he really puts in the time, the hours in the gym. Like he really works hard. He okay. I'm not surprised that he's having a good year because I seen him. You know what I'm saying? I witnessed him put in the time just to, you know what I'm saying, to, to have a good year. So, you know, sure. Kyle, Kyle is a really, going to be a really good player, you know what I'm saying, down in the future. And he's, I heard he's having a really good season this year. I, I caught the last game when he played. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, he, uh, you know, he, he's looked impressive. Uh, what's impressed me about him is, uh, you know he's a good shooter. He's close to the bad skid. He's he's a good shooter. But what really impresses me about him is his passing. Uh, he he seems to be uh, very active with the ball. You know and, and able to find the open man. And it does, doesn't at least to me it doesn't seem like he forces anything. You know if he doesn't have the shot, he's not going to force it. He's going to find somebody who does have the shot. Yeah, he's yeah he's like I, like I said man, I, in practice he he brought it in practice. Even though he wasn't playing, he brought it in practice. Like like he was like he was gonna be playing. He's been doing he's been doing this since you know what I'm saying since I was there. Like I seen like, I know I know what type of game he has. Like I see I, I wouldn't just myself. Like Kyle has a really good IQ. He doesn't he always takes his time. He he didn't know he didn't know what to do and what's about to be in at the right time. He's a really good rebounder also. Okay, cool. Um, so how was the uh, and this is something I've always wondered because I'm never a basketball player. Uh, but I always love the atmosphere and everything. How was the atmosphere at the NCAA tournament game against uh, against Purdue? Because that was a great game, you know. Um, and what was the atmosphere like? Um, it was it was really 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 crazy for me because it, you know that was my first time experiencing that. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it was just crazy. You know, you have a whole like this arena full of people. You know, I'm. I you know, I'm this twenty 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 one year old, never been in the gym. It's crazy and it's super loud. People going, people going crazy. You know, Dustin Murray. It was it was it was a good experience for me. Cool. And very very cool. That's a good Sorry, of it. Sorry to interrupt. I want to welcome, uh, of course, Justin Murray to our show. Uh, Justin, just like. Uh, Corey, we're uh, both uh, at UC last year and are now in the pros. Of course, oh, okay. Justin, uh, Justin, well, thanks uh, for having me on here. I appreciate it. It's our pleasure. We're glad to have you on. Um, we were just uh, finishing up with Corey. Uh, Corey, of course, now is with the Windy City Bulls, and you're with uh, Denver. So, yeah, shoot, we've uh, got a nice UC show going Covering, of mm-hmm. course, uh, you know the current players and uh, seeing what you guys have been up to now that you've graduated. Okay, that sounds good. Excellent. Uh, sorry, uh, Corey, what were you saying? Oh no, man, I, I was just talking about the atmosphere of the, um, oh, the tournament. Yeah. yeah. And, and you did you had that was one of your better scoring games as a Bearcat, wasn't it? If I remember right. Yeah, that was one of my better games. Just like yeah. Yeah, because you logged a decent amount of minutes, and I can't remember, uh, you know, exactly what your your point total was, but you, you put up some good points that game. So that's awesome, man. That was uh, that was a fun game to watch. I ended up having to uh, pay up on a bet on that one uh, with my <laughs> younger brother because I didn't I I was convinced that we weren't going to go to overtime. He was convinced that we were going to win, and uh, I ended up having to do something stupid. But uh, you know. Uh, 
that happens. <laughs> so you got to pick out the buzzer rings, man. Oh my gosh, that was that, you know that was just one of those games that was that was outstanding. You know, kind of the game. I, I'm glad we won. Kind of one of those games that you 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 wish wouldn't end. You know, um, mm-hmm. just just keep going on and going on. That's uh, that was a fun game to watch and uh, and a fun game to be a fan of. Well, you know, maybe not super fun just because biting my nails and all that stuff, but it, it was still mm-hmm. a fun game. You know, glad we came out on top on that. So uh, that's awesome. Uh, that's good. Uh, now, uh, Troy Copain, uh, what was it like having him as your uh, as your point guard? Man, man, Troy, man, Troy had a connection on the court like no other man. He was uh, mm-hmm. he knew where and when to to get the ball to me. He was he was a tough point guard. Also, a lot of energy, mm-hmm. a whole lot of energy. So it was real fun playing with Troy. I'm, I'm gonna miss playing with Troy. Hope I get to play yeah, with him yeah. sometime in the future. But you know, yeah, we we'll see how 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 that goes, you know. Yeah, because they're uh, obviously they're relying on him uh, a decent amount this year. But that's one of the nice things uh, about the the two games so far, and, and then the preseason games before that, they haven't had to rely on his scoring too much. Because uh, you got uh, Jacob Evans has been filling it up from outside, and then oh, yeah. uh, again you, you got Kyle doing his thing on the inside, you know, and as a matter of fact, with Kyle in there, Gary Clark hasn't had to do too much, which, uh, you know, at least in my opinion, does wonders for his game, you know, when he's playing off of another big man playing well, you know, um, I think that really helps him out. So it's been kind of nice having Jacob and uh, and Kyle step up and and take the lead because it's taking some of the pressure off of uh, Troy and off of Gary. Yeah, because that was our go-to guys uh, last last year. So, mm-hmm. so that, that's why I think they're going to have a pretty successful year because they have more guys that's stepping up. Mm-hmm. And they have the younger guys that's learning, mm-hmm. and you know, and they have and they have their games like Trey, Trey Scott, and uh, mm-hmm. and and, and uh, Justin also. So. Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I think uh, last week, uh, James, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, Terry said that Justin Jennifer was the uh, off season MVP. Uh, yeah. He, he, he worked hard in the off season and said, he's going to have a good season. Yeah. He's going to, he's going to have, really, he's going to have a really good season. Like, I always knew Justin was a good player. He just had to, you know, get, get comfortable, get more comfortable now. And I think he's a sophomore now. I think he understands right. the game more. Mm-hmm. He, He's, you know, what I'm saying, got the little freshman, the freshman, you know, itis out a little bit. So now he's, yeah. now he's uh, playing his game. He's looking good too. So yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a fun season, man. It's, it's gonna be a fun season for him, and I, you know, I hope uh, hope you're able to get down here for a game sometime to to see him. You know, it'd be good to see you back in the back in the shoe. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about about this season. I'm be. I'm gonna be watching some games when I can, cause you know we also in season two, so yeah, yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying? Well, hey, like maybe we'll be able to make it up to a game when you all play against uh, I forget what the Pacers, the Ants. If you all end up playing up that way. Yeah, we actually played the uh, the Mad Ants. We played them December third. December third. Okay. December third. I think that game is actually gonna be streaming on uh, ESPN too, so. Oh, oh, will it? Yeah, I think so. Nice. I'll, I'll have to watch that. I have to check it out and see you play some there because it's a the Mad Ants. That's one of the uh, more interesting mascots in uh, in professional sports. So, but uh, yeah, it, it'd be fun to watch that, man. I'll definitely catch that game. Yeah, we're uh, we're glad you came on the show, and we uh, look yeah. forward to uh, you know following up with you, and uh, you know, of course, uh, hearing how the season goes for you. So uh, definitely, we plan on having you back on again. Uh, thank All right, man. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Corey, best of luck, man. Keep working hard. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Excellent. Uh, fortunately, uh, we caught you on a bye week, so that uh, that helps, I'm guessing. But I'm sure you're <laughs> yeah. still crazy busy. So how's it going, uh, Justin? I'm good. Uh, I'm actually in Cincinnati right now. Landed about a couple hours ago. Uh, really? Nice. Nice. Yeah, because of the bye week, we have the, uh, you know, the rest of the week off, and uh, I'm actually think I'm going to the uh, the backhand game on Friday. I'm gonna try to, anyways. Oh, very cool, man. 
Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Good. Maybe you can give him a little bit of a speech and get him going for us. <laughs> oh, man. I'll, I'll do my best. I'll see what I can do. No comment, right? <laughs> Oh uh, man! Well, yeah. Thanks for thanks for coming on with us, Justin. Uh, uh, um, why don't you, uh, if you don't mind, could you just go ahead and uh, catch us up with where you are and what else is going on with your life, man? Oh yeah. Um, well, I'm currently on the practice squad with the Broncos. Um, you know, right up after the draft, I uh, you know decided to go along with them and got there the weekend after the draft for the rookie mini camp. Um, and then that, you know, transitioned into OTAs and, and off-season, or not off-season workouts, but, you know, OTAs and workouts in between there. Um, you know, did that for about a month, had a month off, and then in July reported for camp, um, you know, continue to get better, you know, work my, work my hardest, and uh, I eventually made the cut. Uh, I played in, I think, the fourth quarter, of the uh, third game against the Rams, and then I started and played in uh, the last game against the uh, Cardinals. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, so I've just been, you know, just trying to develop and and get better and learn from the pros and uh, just you know trying to transition into you know from college to becoming a you know a pro. Excellent. Um, with that, I know a lot of people that you know, don't play the game, end up saying this phrase, and I want to get your opinion on it, you think there's any validity to it. They say, oh, if you're not uh, drafted in the first, you know, three or four rounds, it's probably better go undrafted so you can pick your location. Did you feel that that was an advantage, that you were able to pick Denver versus maybe being set, sent to a team that wasn't as well organized? I do. Uh yeah, I think that's a, a huge advantage because that way, you know, um, as you get closer to the end of the, the whole recruiting and, you know, getting closer to the draft and you get to sit back and look at all the teams that are really interested in you and you along with your agent or, you know, whoever your representation representative is, you can, you know, sit down and make a conscious decision on, you know, what's a better fit for you and the pros and the cons and, uh, you know, see where uh, you would benefit most from. That's what I did. Um, as we were going through the process, my agent kind of uh, kind of gathered a list of teams that, you know, would benefit me, like uh, Denver, um, Atlanta, Seattle, um, the 49ers, you know, guys that or you know, teams that ran a similar offense to what we did at UC, you know, I'd be already be, you know, familiarized with it, and, you know, that would be one of my strengths. So, um, you know, it made sense to try to target those teams just to, you know, give me a, an advantage starting out the gate because I was already familiar with the blocking schemes and all that. So, uh, you know, as it got closer and closer and uh, I was able to, you know, kind of target it more on each team as it got, you know, closer to the deadline, I was able to, you know, uh, basically go over the checklist of, you know, what, you know, will benefit me and, you know, ultimately ultimately made the decision with uh, with Denver. Excellent. Uh, I was wondering, have you had uh, any interaction with uh, with Mr. Elway? What's, uh, what's he like? Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, I've had one meeting with him, um, and that was um, – because when you get – when they want you to be on practice squad, you have to get cut first and clear the waivers. So on that day when you get cut, you have to – it's kind of like a process. You have to talk to your position coach and uh, whoever your coordinator is. And then uh, Mr. Elway, he's part of the process, so you have a one-on-one meeting with him. And then, uh, you know, you have to wait around until you clear or whatever, and then you can – Assuming that you clear, you can come back and sign the papers for practice squad. But uh, Mr. Always a cool guy, uh, you know, pretty straightforward. Um, you know, tells you what, you know how it is, and you know what he thinks of you. And I mean, I like him; he's a pretty good guy. So, uh, how are things going with uh, with uh, Clancy uh, or Coach Clancy? 
your offensive line coach? Yeah, uh, pretty good. I like him a lot. Uh, good coach. Um, you know, he uh, takes the time to explain to you, you know, what exactly you're doing wrong and really coach you up instead of just, you know, <laughs> yelling at you and, you know, get on my face or whatever. I mean, he genu- genuinely cares about, um, you know, everyone in the room's development and how they're picking up the offense and their technique. And, you know, he's always willing to help. The same with uh, – Coach Kreger, the uh, assistant O-line coach. I mean, they're both there, and uh, they really care about what they do. And uh, they're passionate, and uh, they really care about getting everyone better and making the team better as well. Sounds great. Uh, Mark, any uh, questions? Yeah, yeah, sorry. I was uh, was listening there for a second. Um, Justin, biggest Uh difference between college and the pros, is is it really the speed of the game? (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's a, a huge difference, especially, uh, you know, I'm a tackle, so, you know, going against, you know, the next elite level of of, uh, of pass rushes, is, it's truly unbelievable. I mean, I went from blocking, you know, Silverberry Muhan and Kamani Sense, now I'm blocking, you know, Von Miller, DeMarcus Ware. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's night and day. It really is. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I, I, people who have made that jump, obviously, have always said that the speed was the the biggest uh, the biggest difference. Mm-hmm. So that's good confirmation of it. So uh, what is it like blocking Von Miller, man? <laughs> uh, well, to be honest, I blocked DeMarcus Ware more than Von okay. Miller during practice squad. But I have gone up against, you know, Von, but – Man, it's something else. Uh, you you got to be ready. Uh, you got to yeah. be focused. You got to be ready because I'm telling you, both of those guys, both of those guys are so fast. If your first initial kick is is off, then you're in for a rough play. Yeah. So you just got to make sure that you know uh, your technique is sound, and you know definitely use a snap count to your advantage because if they if they get a get get off, then it's pretty much a wrap. <laughs> mm. Mm. But uh, now I've been, you know, getting better uh, every day. Uh, uh, when I was at UC, I was primarily right. Okay. Uh, I didn't play a game at all at left. I think I only had maybe one or two practices at left during my whole college career. Mm-hmm. And uh, about more than halfway through training camp, they actually moved me to left tackle. So that was, okay. you know, a process trying to learn the technique and all that and trying to, you know, get better at it. But now, week 10 in the in the season, I think I'm better at left than I am at right just okay. because I've been able to go up against Von Miller and DeMarcus Ware and Shane Ray every day at practice. So, I mean, I had no choice but to get better. So, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, you're going against the best. It's going to elevate your game. And uh, mm-hmm. that's awesome. I'm I'm glad it's doing that for you, man. That that's that is great, you know. And position change that is not easy. Some, you know, people will say, "Oh, what's the big difference between left tackle and right tackle?" Yeah. It is a completely different set of skills, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah. Because you basically have to, you know, I mean, it's the same technique. You just have to flip it. I always okay. say, try, you know, try to imagine, you know, riding with the opposite hand for a while. That's pretty much what it is. Just okay. got to get used to it, you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, over time it'll come. Yeah, and that's great. I'm I'm glad you've been able to make the switch. You know that that shows how good an athlete you are. You know that, and mm-hmm. you know not not trying to blow smoke up your ass or anything. That's you know that's awesome that, that you're able to do that. Um, now before before the show started, uh, uh, James and I were talking about your time at UC. Mm-hmm. Um, did, were you uh, on five bowl teams? Yes. Uh, we were able to go to a bowl game each uh, year I was there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, which bowl was your favorite? Oh, man. Um, I would probably say Hawaii last year just because okay. of the location, even though, you know, we didn't do too well. Right, right. But, uh, I mean, everybody would love to go to Hawaii for a free trip, you know. I mean, it was, you know, absolutely beautiful. Yeah. But um, my my second favorite would be uh, my first year, the Liberty Bowl. 
that we okay. went to. I mean, we got the win. Uh, mm-hmm. Memphis was a great city. Went to my first NBA basketball game. Oh, did you? I mean, okay. Yeah, it was just uh, it was pretty well rounded. I liked that a lot. Very cool. So, yeah, that's, that's that's yeah. You know, the uh, the winning definitely helps, but uh, yeah. you know, Hawaii gets some beach time. You know, uh, mm-hmm. what did you get some beach time? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I went a couple couple of days actually. We had uh, plenty of free time to, you know, have to practice to to do that stuff. So. Very good. Yeah, so very good. Very, now, uh, now you, you didn't get up on a surfboard, did you? No, I didn't do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, James, uh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, Silverberry, uh, Silverberry talked very highly of that trip. Um, yeah. He was uh, he was all excited about uh, the Xbox that you'll end up getting for being part of that as part of the swag bag. So he, he definitely uh, was uh, fond of that one. But, yeah, it sounds <laughs> like uh, you've been to a lot of neat places uh, via the, uh, the bowl games. Uh, one mm-hmm. thing, you mentioned about temperament of coaches. Wanted to get your opinion on uh, the, not saying one's better than the other, but just what the difference is between uh, Butch Jones and, uh, of course, Coach Tuberville. Um. Yeah, I felt that uh, I felt that our uh, Coach Jones was definitely more of a, a player's coach. You know, he was uh, more approachable, I guess. And uh, you know, Tuberville is real old school. <laughs> Really old school. Uh, you know, he he has a set agenda and he sticks to it. Uh, he believes in, you know, grinding and, you know, hard practice. Not to say that, I mean, I, I think that Coach Jones just did a better, care, better job of, t- of taking care of his players. Like he knew when to, you know, take the pads off and kind of rest his players a little bit. Uh, that makes sense. Um, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Cause, I mean, she, yeah, it yeah, does make a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, like uh, NFL to uh, do a lot of uh, practices without the pads nowadays, and it's yeah. to help there to cut down on injuries. So yeah, it makes sense that uh, mm-hmm. Coach Jones you know, not overwhelming you all and uh, getting to uh, win the bowl games and do better record. It makes sense. Yeah, because uh, I remember I think it was my second year at UC. Uh, I think we had our bye weeks the first and fourth week, maybe. And then we had, like, uh, eight or nine weeks of just straight games. And Coach Jones, you know, took the pads off. And, you know, we were in spider vests. And, you know, we really, you know, hit and stuff like that. And I think because of that, you know, we were fresher and we played better. And I think that contributed to, you know, our 10-plus or our 10-win seasons that we had early on when I was there. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, there, there's uh, something to say for that. Yeah, yeah. I think that's definitely the the biggest difference. <clears throat> well, because I'm, I, you know, and I'm not sure how up to date you are with everything here going on. You know, with with <laughs> as busy as you are, but Coach Tubbs is coming under a little bit of fire this year. Um, yeah, I've seen it for for what's going on, and uh, actually lashed out a little bit tonight on his radio show um, oh, at really? the media of, of all things. Um, and the coverage that the team has been getting, you know. So, uh, it, it, but it is interesting to hear your perspective on the two of them. You know that he's a little more old mm-hmm. school, and you know definitely sticks with that agenda and everything. And maybe mm-hmm. maybe isn't as flexible. So, and now I've got an off the wall question for you. Now that you're back home, what's the first uh, restaurant you're gonna go eat at? Oh man, it's, I got to narrow down the two. It's either gonna mm-hmm. be Penn Station. Or mm-hmm. La Rosa's. Oh, there you go. All right. I'm thinking La Rosa's choice tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, man. There you go. Oh, very um, good. I mean, the the nice thing to be able to say though about the last two years, I mean, you all had probably one of, if not the best, offense in UC's history statistically. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's hard to go wrong there. And then, uh, not to defend coach or you know anything good or bad against that. But um, he does bring up a good uh, point that there were so many of you to go to the pros this last year. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, there were, what, two or three of the offensive line, four or five wide receivers were in camps. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It does make it difficult to uh, replenish all that. 
Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. It's hard to replace that. And 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 James Craig, me if I'm wrong, but that first game of the season, if I remember right, he was starting some defensive linemen on the offensive line. Yes, yeah. The first because game, of how depleted right. they were. Exactly. The first game, uh, the, he had a couple offensive linemen. I think the guards were uh, run down because of practice. So he had uh, started two defensive tackles who had not played offensive line before or hadn't played since high school. So that was mm-hmm. that was rough for him. Uh, I wanted to get your insight, uh, Justin, on um, you know some of the some of the fellows that did go uh, to the pros. And then, of course, uh, some like uh, Shaq, who unfortunately hasn't had the opportunity this year. Mm-hmm. I want to get your insight on uh, some of those guys. Um, so, do you stay in touch with any of them, that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Chad West, uh, Alex Chisholm, Silver, uh, you know, those are, you know, my closest friends, but... Uh, you know, I just wish the best for all of them. Uh, I wish we all could have made it, but it's just very unfortunate. And uh, hopefully they'll get, you know, more chances. But um, <clears throat> as I travel to away games with the Broncos now, you know, it's pretty cool, you know, seeing across the sideline, you know, Johnny Holton. You know, we just played them last week. We, You know, we lost the game or whatever. But after the game, I was able to talk to him for a little bit. You know, uh, Tyreek Burwell. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember him. He was a uh, he was a year ahead of me. He was a tackle slash guard, mm-hmm. uh, walk on. Uh, that was an undrafted free agent that made it with the Chargers. So I was awesome. able to you know talk to him after the game as well. And then we all know that you know Parker was drafted to the, the Chiefs and you yeah. know. So uh, when we play him in two weeks, and then on Christmas Day, I'll be able to talk to him as well. So it's cool, you know, being at the next level and looking across the sidelines and seeing, you know, guys that, you know, I played with, you know, in college for, you know, four or five years. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think that's really cool. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we all just keep it up and, you know, be successful. And and, and that's awesome. And that's one of the huge steps that you see football's taken. You know, I mean, uh, I grew up here in Cincinnati and I'm considerably older than you. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you didn't hear that. When, when I was younger, you know, guys going from UC to the pros just didn't happen. And it's nice to, to look out there now and see, you know, plenty of players on pro rosters that played here at UC, you know, it shows you the, the steps that the program has taken, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and steps that it can, it can still take, you know, uh, I think, you know, there's still more growing that they can do. So, um, you know, uh, that's just my two cents on that. But uh, mm-hmm. how, how cool was it playing for the hometown team? Oh, man, I loved it. Uh, you know, I was born and raised in Cincinnati as well. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, being able to, you know, only travel about 15 minutes away and still be able to play mm-hmm. in front of, you know, my friends, family, community, you know, all that. I mean, it was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. you know, all of them seeing me, you know, develop and get better, uh, you know, as my career went on here. Uh, I mean, it was wonderful. That's yeah. awesome. That's got to, that's got to be a great feeling. Uh, I, I can only imagine. Kind of a continuation yeah. on that question. What was it like to play down at uh, Paul Brown Stadium uh, that season? Um, I mean, to be honest, it didn't really feel like a home game. You know, because we didn't really, you know, it didn't feel like Nipper Stadium. You know, on a you know Saturday night or whatever. I mean, it's different. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, atmosphere and, and all that. But, um, you know, I'm just happy that we were able to be successful uh, at that stadium and win the championship that year. <laughs> mm-hmm. so that was the best part. But uh, yeah. it's definitely a different feeling uh, from being yeah, in Nippert than in uh, Paul yeah, Brown. I definitely, uh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely uh, prefer Nippert. It's always good to be on campus and just, you know, have that home hometown feel to it. So, you know, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Let's so any uh, big plans for the off season? Um and hopefully it doesn't start anytime soon for you, but Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Hopefully uh a second week of February. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, I mean, I'm not really sure yet. 
um, you know, definitely, you know, continue to work out and, you know, stay in shape. But I'll probably come back here uh, maybe a couple of weeks, you know, somewhere in between there. But uh, mostly just relax, really. Just, you know, get ready for the off season and uh, try to make the 53. Excellent. Well, we wish you the best with that, and we definitely yeah, have you back on the show. Uh, you know, as you uh, start more, you know, start uh, more games, and you know, of course, uh, you know, anytime you're playing the Bengals, we all, you know, we want to hear, uh, you know, good things about that. You know, that way, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's always nice to play the hometown team. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. We, we do wish you the best. Thank you. I appreciate it. Welcome, and thank you for uh, being on our show tonight. Oh, no problem. It was my- it was a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Justin, thanks, man. And uh, enjoy your time off this week. And uh, seriously, best of luck. We're rooting for you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Take care. Have a good one. Oh, you too. It's been a great show tonight. We've had uh, some really good guests. So that mm-hmm. was nice. Uh, checking in on uh, recent grads of both the football and basketball program. Both have uh, gone on to success in the pros, so that's always nice. Yep. So uh, the game this week against Memphis. Um, let's see. I was going to say the final score I'm predicting is who cares versus uh, uh, probably Memphis a uh, couple more points. But uh, yeah, I, I'm going with Memphis definitely scoring more this week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that would be nice if he is able to uh, to give them uh, kind of a pep talk or something down there at the game. Yeah, they need it. They need it. You know, it's uh, unfortunately it's getting the feeling of those uh, mid '90s years. You know, with this season, just uh, get it over with kind of thing. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I just don't think they can pull it off this week. And then, yeah, I mean, shoot, he probably won't be uh, starting his. Uh, off season anytime soon. I mean, his team seven and three, or turning their repeat and super. I mean, falling up after the Super Bowl championship. So yeah, uh, yeah, they definitely look like they're going to have another nice run in them. But yeah, I'm glad that all worked out. Both the uh, both the gentlemen got the call in and mm-hmm. got a nice show under our belts. Let me pull up. Oops, dark computer. Yeah, that was uh, that was outstanding stuff from both of them. Love hearing the uh, the perspective of former Bearcats and you know catching up with them, seeing what they're doing now, and uh, and seeing you know their opinion of of different things with UC. So that was uh, excellent work getting those guests. Why, thank you. Yeah, oh, that's what I was about. I was going to pull up with the uh, the guests for next week. We got. Uh, I know we got another good show on our hands. Did it turn off? Oh, good. It turned off our recording, so it doesn't really matter at this point what I say. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hit the wrong damn button. Yeah, it happens. But we got yep. most of it in there. So, uh, yeah, it sounds, yeah, it was a good one. Uh, you know, of course, as always, I appreciate you writing up a little paragraph or two. That way we can get Coach to advertise it for us. Yeah, no worries, man. I'll get that to him. Cool. Oh, yes, it's going to be uh, Marvin Gentry, and hopefully this time Anthony will Anthony Hope will call in. Okay. Yeah, so we got those two, and then after that we got Eric Hicks. So we got some, some good stuff going on. And, uh, yeah. and the thing about getting trying to get a hold of Terry Nelson and trying to get uh, some of his boys from uh, the previous teams, Van Exel and then to – Maybe get us the you know get there get connected with them. That'd be fun. Dude, that'd be awesome, and I probably would be able to contain my excitement. So that that would be outstanding. Exactly, the whole fanboy thing. I know what you mean. You know, oh, dude, those. I'd be a wreck. <laughs> so we'll work on getting that going and all, and uh, good luck with the uh, the girls' basketball. Should be fun. Yeah, I'd, yeah, uh, I'd, yeah. I think the team needs more luck than I do. So I know they got some good stuff uh, going on at. Uh, I think it was. Xavier with the uh, the Lauren Hill Classic looks pretty cool. Yeah, I actually have uh, I've already reached out to uh, local high school coaches just to talk to them and figure out what I need to teach these girls. So uh, maybe I have to do the same in college. Definitely a smart move. Yeah, anytime you can get 
with any of those type of people, it's always a good thing. And then uh, shoot down the road on the NKU show when I have uh, Coach Winstall on. We'll have uh, have you on, uh, you know, just to, uh, just to pick her brain, that kind of thing. Cause, exactly. Yeah, Beg yeah. her for some tips. <laughs> exactly. Cool, man. Talk to you then, buddy. Peace. All right, brother. See you, James. <laughs>